<laughs> just go, Pepe. Just go. Like a boss, thank you, Gator, for that resubscription during the intro. Now, how many people can do that? Not many. Oh, that's enough. I don't want to hear it from you. Always with the applause. Push that button way too damn much. Pepe, stop it. Hi, welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. Uh, I have shaved the stash. I the curse is gone. The the bad spirits are are gone. It is a new day. I am fresh. I am cleansed. I tested negative for COVID. I am feeling much, much better. You're going to see highlights on the YouTube channel. Land with me and my Sam Elliott mustache. You're going to see me in a, in a sick state. You're going to say, oh, did you? Why aren't you getting any better? Well, it's because the magic of time, actually, and cutting them up into highlights. Hi, this is DG of the present. You might watch highlights of DG in the past. Okay. And... There's a possibility the DG of the future will stop in. He's a real prick. I hate that guy. All right. Are we ready to watch the Inside Star Citizen uh, show? As well, look at this. Look, we got the, we got dad shoes. I'm already happy. Jared, Jared is in dad mode. Dad shoes. I feel like I'm going to watch some type of sitcom here from, from the early 90s. And, and I, I, we need a laugh track. Pepe, make sure you get the laugh track ready. Good. Right there. The, this is the part. Shh, shh, shh. Now listen, the part where Jared says something silly, right? But it's not really silly. That's when you hit it. Just like that. <laughs> oh, stop it. That was that was like literally 94. I think that was 94. Uh that particular laugh track. Let's do it. So, have you uh you've seen uh have you ever seen the ISC videos before where we do QA? Yes. Uh what what did you think about previous QA videos? Um, yeah, it's been really cool, and like it's been nice that the user have been able to highlight what QA does. Have you ever looked at the, the comments or anything? Um, I, Was Jared giving that dude a haircut? Was, is he a barber, too? God damn it, Jared. You are versatile. You are versatile. I think the uh, comments... <laughs> That's it. That was my joke. That was my joke. That wasn't Jared's joke. Don't do that to me right now. We're a bit... Um... Interesting, to say yeah. the least. <laughs> Are you saying people don't like QA videos? I'm, I'm not not saying that. Some do, some would, that for sure. Yeah. Double nods. Like this one. I hope so. I hope they enjoy the upcoming content that's coming. Um, you know, uh, it's been a long road to 318, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's been a really long road. A really, really long road. That's okay, because I have patience. I'm an adult. You know, no child. Um, um, I'm sure people are really going to enjoy all the... What's up, Limitless? How uh, you doing, bro? New content that's coming. By the way, did you guys see Paul Jones quit? Head art director of Cloud Imperium Games. What happened there? I don't know. It could have been, could have been friendly. The difference between Embedded QA and... Uh, general QA is that we work closely with the development teams. We provide direct feedback to uh, locations and um, features that they are working on. So for me, that's the lighting team and the interactables team. I work hand in hand with the various different content teams, so Sandbox 1, 2, EU L1, EU L2. You know, because the lighting team is kind of one of the teams that work yeah, on things right, right at the end. It's usually the case where I'm kind of Paul Jumping on a location just before the rest of the QA department hop on it. We look out for specifically art-related issues. That could be things like missing materials, replace me textures. With a normal QA, they would have to put in a bug report. It gets sent off to production, and they send it over to the appropriate uh, artist or designer. Whereas for me, I'm essentially cutting out the middleman. I can just directly go to a developer or an artist or designer and say, hey, I've noticed this issue. Is this intended? Or just giving them real-time feedback and bugs. The idea is that we find and iron out any of the issues before it is delivered directly to the QA department so they can then uh, get it out to the wider, wider ba uh, the backers and the wider public. 
I think that whole section needed many more explosions. Uh, next time, we need to add an explosion sound effect to really help that out. That was, Pepe, that was my joke. Pepe, that was my joke. Don't laugh. Don't do the laugh track of my joke. That wasn't Jared's joke. I instructed you. Jared's joke's not mine. That's the second time, Pepe. Don't make me fire you. Don't make me fire you. Right now, I'm working on the IE holes, the Drake into interplanetary bro. kind of taken hold this year. They're running the show. Theme-wise, it's, it's very different. That's not just sort of simple color changes. It's kind of the overall feel of the event. The floor layouts have, have also changed, so the lights that are going to be lighting up the ships are going to be all different. Oh, Basically, man, I need to make Drake sure that, that Drake well, the events are, aren't dark to begin with, lighting the ships on display yes. correctly. Best display ever. Drake, it's the only name that should ever be in your mouth. The only one. I don't want to hear any other name come out of your mouth. The various environment probes around the area are reacting correctly to the environment. Color grades working correctly. You know, the, the atmospheric fog that's placed in the area by the team is present and reacting to lights properly. I think the lighting team have done a, a great job. I think the environment teams in general have done a great job, but because I sort of am speaking for the lighting team, I really like what they've done. Yeah, looks awesome. It's Drake. Because we've had a bit extra time, we've been able to actually bring out these outposts. Um, they weren't initially meant to come out for 318. When 317 came out, we had just initially five derelict outposts on Microtech. But now we're Beautiful. times that by seven. So when 318 I, I rolls out, outpost. there should be 35 derelict outposts, Ooh. 10 on Microtech, 10 on Hurston, and between ten, one to Microtech, six on various ten, different moons throughout Hurston. the Saturn system. Okay, one to six on every moon. Nice. We're adding features. <laughs> We're adding landscape features, okay, that way needed to be in long time ago, okay? It is not a little thing. It is not a big thing. Uh, that's what she said, and she's happy with it. Um, oh, wait, we're talking about derelicts. Uh, so really, what I have to say about derelicts are this. Adding features, adding these features to the landscape will only help the game. We need more of them. We need more of these features. And it's nice that we have more places to go. But DG, they're only places to go and they don't do anything for you. They don't do anything for you. Do they get inside your ship and do things in your ship? No, they don't. The places you can look at. Oh, but DG, it's just like, oh, it's, oh, I guess it's a real life simulator. I can just take a picture of the place and, oh, look at my little journey. Another place. Just shut up. Let me enjoy these new features. Let me enjoy these fucking new features. Okay? Let me enjoy them. Can I enjoy them? Well, the players can go through and explore <laughs> the environment. They can look for loot boxes so they can get a munch or maybe find a multi-tool or just things that they could sell at kiosks. Um, there are also delivery missions as well, similar to ones that you've seen in 317, where quiet. the players will go to a direct outpost, second. which is- Hold on a second, like what, what's going on with my audience tonight? What, what, what it's really quiet out there right now. Hello, hey Pepe, can you hear me? Yeah, I know, I know they're lucky. They are lucky they have us. I know they are. I know they are. Occupied by nine tails. It's okay, uh, take it's them okay, out, dude. get the Just delivery box, and life out deliver there, it so I know to wherever it needs alone. to go. <laughs> so some of the issues that we've seen so far with the Delhi Outpost are related to AI. As you might have seen in Citizen Con, um, there have been some updates to the combat AI, and it's kind of slowly making its way into line. the PU. So there's a few little teething issues there just to make sure that's that the AI are actually working correctly within the daily outpost on the planets and hopefully not walking into walls. Because 318 is have it's got a lot of content coming. Um, with would say like Pez for instance. Um, it has been a bit more listen, listen, listen. I just have to reaffirm here that what you did, Gator, at the beginning of the show by by subscribing, right? That is a good thing because you caused a positive action into the DG three sixty community. Also, I can buy bread tomorrow, and I'm very hungry. Um, I haven't eaten in a long time. Thank you for the bread, Gator. You literally gave me the body of Gator. 
Anybody going to give me the blood, the wine? Anybody got the wine? Anybody? Wine and bread? Feeling better. Feeling better. More of a challenging release, just because obviously the new issues that are coming up because of Pez. But I think I that the teams are tackling it as quickly as they possibly can. We're thankful that we're getting the extra time to kind of really flesh it out and make sure that it's a quality release for the players. Currently I am working on the uh, new rest stop stations that are going to be found in the pyro system once we release that in the upcoming 4.0 mm -hmm. patch. Because these stations are lawless and there's going to be no um, like green zones to govern your behavior on the stations, we're oh. going over it just to make sure that the locations are fun for the backers to engage in combat. So we've been covering yes. stuff like sniping spots, yes. uh, combat routes, Yes. Balance against facing AI, um, you know, um, also identifying issues. I don't feel like he's working hard enough. I don't know what it is about this guy. I don't know. I don't, I just don't feel like he's working hard enough. Get Jared, get this man working harder. Get him working harder, Jared. Potential issues with the environment that might hinder the gameplay experience, such as uh, potential issues with lighting and fog potential bottlenecks and choke points in the uh, station layout that might cause no. problems for players. No, he's an underachiever. No, we just need more. We need more from you. We just need more from you, man. Can you stay after work a little bit, maybe? An hour or so after work, huh? No? Can't? Can't show us any initiative, can you? No? Okay. All right. We see what we got here. We see what we got here. And end up getting uh, bottlenecked by another hostile group. We found some issues with some of the environmental puzzles currently. There's a bit of desync. If I was to disable, say, an electronic <laughs> trap, guys, it guys would so not much. show up for the other uh, player. So we've been working on like, getting some debug and stuff to make sure that the devs are oh, fully Mel, aware of what the so issue is milk. and they can rectify this before a wider release. It's looking like tasty milk. There's a dramatic difference between these stations and the ones that are found in the Stanton system. Um, they're very... Uh, dark and oppressive oh, in nature and very goodness. run down Nothing and they offer a lot more Nothing gameplay opportunities for players and also um, a lot more possibilities and overall experience that the current I rest just, stops just uh, are not there, capable to cater to. Going nuts, give me some, give me some, give me a nade. Well, what I want to emphasize to the community yeah. is just how important and respected uh, QA is within CIG. We are constantly um, looking out for issues and ensuring um, that the quality of the game is as high a standard as possible. On, Once we've Ash, been through a stretch you, and we've got a new patch out to see how the backers are uh, responding to the new content and uh, to see how they're enjoying it. Um, tonight, it it's, uh, it's always a highlight to see just how many people uh, enjoy what we're doing. Yeah, I'm the sure there's people station, out there, you know, some of our backers that... There's going to be one station that really matters in pyro and there's going to be other stations to boot as well kiss but the uh the the main pirate station in in the lore it's been occupied by so many different like factions it's crazy and now the pirates own it and that's going to be like um korea like that's going to be like the korea of uh pyro but better like times 50 because it's going to be an outlaw system and i can't wait for that like, that's what I really, I just can't wait till Pyro comes out. My jam is coming right around the corner. I, I cannot wait any longer. Like, I just, my jam is right around the corner. And, dude, I'm going to play so much more Star Citizen when they get when they get Pyro out the door. And it's, like, beautiful chaos. Beautiful chaos. That's, that's my jam. Beautiful chaos. I want to fly and know I'm going to die eventually. I want to know that I'm going to fly and die. That's why I play in the motherfucking game. I want to feel the danger. When Pyro comes out, man, it's going to be, I'm going to be balls to the wall 24-7. You might as well hook me in. Just f find a plug and just hook me in, man. Would want to get into this this industry and, and the What's going you know, on, QA guys? is a How good doing, buddy? entry level position. Entry level position, yeah. Look right, in the, look right into this camera and say, we're hiring. We're hiring. Let me lose all my stuff. Tech. <laughs> Let me lose, including Quality my Quality assurance dude. teams including are an essential mind. element of any video oh, wait, games development. Late and I'm betting them right there into the pits next to the designers, next to the artists, next right, to the programmers, right, allows for a synchronicity of purpose and an acknowledgement of necessity that's been a hallmark of Star Citizen's development for years. 
And while technical teams continue to put Alpha 318 through its paces ahead of its now scheduled December release, the delay from its original publish has provided a number of limited opportunities to content teams to afford them chances they might not otherwise have been able to utilize. And for members of the EU Sandbox 1 team, that means getting to continue an initiative started earlier this year to research community-created racetracks in the Stanton system and find new ways to incorporate them officially into the very fabric of the Persistent Universe. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you could thank XGR for that in Black Maze. They've done amazing work. Uh, I don't know, I think Luigi was here earlier uh, on the stream. He's part of XGR, and they, they really are the guys that, that Cloud and Perry have been talking to for track designs. And I can't wait till, like, we got Hex gambling. Like, gambling at Hex... Uh, being able, and I hope the racers are NPC as well as human, uh, and I and I can't wait to see in what method uh, we can gamble. Like I want to get the gambling going. I want to bet on races. I uh, I I'm really looking forward to it. So the yellow race track was taken inspiration from one of the race tracks built by the community, which was um, the Grim right. Prospects race right, track on the Star right, Season dude. Racing Discord, I believe. So there are some on there that are exact. Uh, we've taken, you know, direct copies of those tracks, but the yellow one is a little bit different because we've moved it slightly away from Grimhex into an adjacent asteroid field. So our designer he in DE, Antoine Fogel, he's taken, um, you know, a course and he's Should made it for players to play. Everywhere? Or egg sacks? Those I are. think it's just really nice to have more space POIs. Um, we have, you know, attractions like Grimhex, but we need more in the surrounding vicinity. So, you know, Always it might be a case more. of where you're just flying through the asteroid ring in yellow, trying to get to the planet's surface, and you come across something like this. Here we go. And we've really built up the structures with refinery modules and cargo modules that we've used before. So it's a nice point of interest, and also it looks cool. You know, we're using lots of the natural really formations awesome. of the rocks themselves and also um, asteroid tethers and stuff like that that are already in the game. Those are our natural checkpoints for the race. I think it's really cool that we have a community that we can take inspiration from and build something of our own. As much as we play test, as much as we spend time in the engine, the players are the ones who are spending hours and hours refining their skills and thinking of new activities to do. So, for example, with the Grim Prospects racetrack, it was quite bare, you know, they were just racing around a, a pre-memorized route, That's going awesome, around dude. all of these asteroids. Dude, but now we can really um, delineate that race and, you know, we can art it up and make it look pretty as well, so people have more memorable moments to talk about. Dude, that's great shots. From Yila, named for the oldest of three siblings featured in the now classic 24th century children's morality tale, A Gift for Baba, which you can read in its entirety on the robertspaceindustries.com website. Oh, check that Shout out. out to the narrative team. We move to Euterpe, named for the ancient Greek muse of music, the smallest... Herpy? What'd he say? And perhaps most barren of Microtech's three Space moves. Herpes. What I'm currently working on now is the oh, racing oh, track oh, on no. Utopia. It's called Icebreaker. Um, I believe it was actually from the community originally. And what we did is we took that initial <laughs> uh, bare bone structure <laughs> and Still we better. basically Still created using the Microtech um, prefabs and assets is we actually created <laughs> no, like a little Nimbus. research thank facility I'm glad base. I, I wasn't alone. We've kept the path <laughs> uh, as close as we could to the initial community racetrack. But what we've done is we've added bits of flavor in um, from uh, structures to fly past, structures to fly under, uh, put it in the Discord, Max. And then we've done a bit I'll, of a, I'll, I'll, uh, a sliding path um, to kind of help navigate the player or become a subscriber, um, around the space, but without feeling like the intention beforehand was meant to be mm -hmm. for race and it was meant to be this um, kind of large open front sea um, kind of facility with like lo lo long struts coming out uh, and kind of good. Um, there's good vantage uh, points as well for like when the players come together that we have little landing pad spots that where you know you could you know group up get together you could watch the you know your teammates flying around you know trying to beat one another kind of competitively on utopia there's not actually um tons of plis and i think to be honest this I new space this new location answer. is going to be one of the key locations on this moon now these two new racetracks on Yila and Euterpe make up only a Best third of the community creations ever. being canonized in the upcoming Alpha 318. 
and we're going to be showcasing even more being created by our partners at Turbulent on tomorrow's Star Citizen Live. But before we leave the topic this week, here's a brief visual teaser of EU Sandbox 1's third track this Very patch cool, on the surface Very of our corp cool, on the outskirts of Area 18. I like this track. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that like the Kinda developers like sitting beside episode, them, though. embedded QA are often found working on patches for next week, next month, and- Okay, okay, I will say this. This was kind of a filler episode, okay? So I'm not gonna grade this one spectacularly, right? But but look at the level of production. Can we just get like the level of production, right? It's a lot more effort being put into Inside Star Citizen which I have been preaching for a year now. So it's great to see that they've raised the bar. We have that. Remember what uh, CD Projekt Red did with Cyberpunk? Do you remember how they presented it, how professional professional that was? Uh, that's what I was looking for for Inside Star Citizen. And I think we've got it, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's a waste of time at all because the relationship that's built between the gamer and the developer are really important. And you can see that in the content, right, Ash? Like, you know, th it's interesting to me that you say that because there's a lot of people out there that do mimic that and say, uh, like what Ash was saying, like a lot of people don't think it's important. Ash wasn't saying that. He, Ash was just saying that there are people out there that think that this isn't important, like the production value isn't important. And then they're the same people that bitch when something goes wrong and they say, well, you're not transparent enough. You, you need to be transparent enough. And oh, and they laugh at the show for whatever reasons, for lack of production, perhaps. And so like the, the cool thing is when you do see the bar being raised on the production value, it just shows you how much more professional Cloud Imperium is going about their marketing. It's literally marketing. And nobody can tell me anything differently. They're marketing exactly the package that they're selling to you. That's what she said. No, that's not right. Uh, but I will. I want to see these paints that Max put into the Discord. Did you put those in there, Max? Max has some paints that he wanted to post. He said from the twenty nine fifty two best in show. Uh, let's see if we got the link here that we can see. I don't. Uh, there we go. Yes. All right. Let's check it out here. Thank you so much, Max. Appreciate that, dude. And uh, okay, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I'm definitely digging the reds. I'm definitely digging that. Um, and I, I will say that I am actually looking forward to IAE. Um, I, I think it's a really good idea, and to to basically have a free fly, bring new people into the game, and I think they just need a better way to market it. I, I, I really think that. They just need a better way to market the the IAE. Um, it is it is essential to bringing in more players. You notice there's a big lull right now in Star Citizen. I'm noticing it too uh, in my views. In fact, I'm getting a lot more views on other uh, content and topics you guys are bringing up for the morning show. And I find it interesting because you we always hit these. We always hit these like real high highs. All the popular YouTubers come in, they play the game for like, what, <laughs> two or three weeks, and then they just like skip out, right? As opposed to the people that have been around for a long time like us. We saw, we see the crests and we see the the lows right now, and it's it's like the bear market, I feel, of Star Citizen. <laughs> uh, you know, like it's the bear market of the stock market. It's the bear market of crypto. I feel like it's kind of like the bear market of, of Star Citizen. And the people that are around now, the people that are really not saying they're tired. Oh, I'm so tired of it. I can't take it anymore. It's too much to follow a game. It's too much. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm going to break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people that are saying this shit, it's like, hey, dudes, you know, it's a game. We'll get through it. Everything's fine. It's part of development. 
this is how this is how it goes. This is how it rolls. And uh, I'm glad you guys joined me tonight. Uh, we're gonna have a quick after party because I do have to uh, do a lot of cleaning at the house <laughs> tonight after my COVID. Real fun stuff, uh, so that I can bring my son in uh, to uh, the infected headquarters uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and we will be having a morning show. But let's click on over and uh, let's see what we got over here. Ah, hey guys. We're just going to do one quick video uh, for the after party here. Thanks for sticking with me. Thank you. By the way, can I just say, guys? Yeah, he's like a smaller me, isn't he? He's like a he's like a smaller me. I feel like uh, with 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 glasses that I should have got at least a year ago because my eyes are terrible and and facial hair, which you know we did have the mustache, but uh, you know no one can compare with the DG stash. Can we just say that stash is of epic proportions? Uh, I really think we should have some type of service for it tomorrow that we truly remember the stash for what it was, which is the, the manliest thing that the world has ever seen. It was too much mustache man to handle for my face. It, it was a curse of sorts, but let's not get into the mustache. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about XGR. And let's talk about how amazing XGR is in Black Maze and what they're doing for the space and how they are helping developers develop racetracks organically through the design and again showing the connection between gamer and backer verse developer not even verse but together it's like a synergy together working together <laughs> like that is really awesome i don't think i really have seen this level of connection in game development ever like really I really think Cloud Imperium is trailblazing away for games who want to be backed by, for developers that want their games to be backed by developers or by, by uh, gamers, by, by the gamers themselves. These developers are finding ways to make these connections. And Cloud Imperium is one of the people, one of the companies that are, that are doing that with over 800 employees now, over 500 million in revenue. Obviously, they found a way to keep bodies sitting down, interested, engaged. And that is a very hard thing to do. I've talked to developers here on the channel from other title, from other games, uh, and they are always talking about how difficult it is to grow community, to keep that player base. Uh, and I can say, like, really beyond the shadow of a doubt, Cloud Imperium, they're on their game right now. They're on their game. And there's not a lot of other developers that can put this level of professionalism out there that can keep this connection with the backers quite like Cloud Imperium has done. For good or bad, whatever you think of them, look at the revenue as proof in thinking, hey, maybe there's something here. Maybe they, are, maybe they know what they're doing. Maybe. Uh, even the person who is so opposed to everything Star Citizen and, Cl and Cloud Imperium games and Chris Roberts, even the most opposed person right now would have to look at this and say, okay, you know, all right. And give them some props for getting to this point. So anyway, let's get to a gamer, a backer here, Black Maze, um, lead of XGR. Extreme uh, G Racing in Star Citizen. And obviously, this man was drawn to Star Citizen and, and he is connected to it in, in, the, in the very same way that a lot of us watching tonight are connected to this title, right? That is something that's worth a lot. And the game industry generally does not foster that vibe between the, the backer and the developer. Let's see what uh, Black Maze and XGR are up to. Race Chase. 
this is the most important point <laughs> yes. in the short Thank history you, of we are XGR. The world. We've been here we for just over a year children. now. We've had we our first anniversary. Children. We are and our mind was blown when so members of the development team showed okay, an sorry. interest sorry. in racing sorry. and the racetracks that we are building around the verse. We have, with the community, built a lot and the snake pit was built by Osashis and myself and CIG embraced that track and put yep. it in game they didn't have to but and they did and that was the highlight of the community that was the highlight that he had that was the oh my god moment my oh my god moment was when we talked about uh, dynamic weather before they even were talking about it and became a thing planetary landing and how we we wanted it before it was a thing and it became a thing and a lot of the things that we voice up here on this channel that eventually become things and i think that is my oh my god moment when we were theory crafting the hell out of star citizen in 2013 and 2014 2015 very early on and really theory crafting the hell out of this game. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I have such a, a large subscriber base. It's because I have a hell of an imagination. And talking about these things and telling you the stories of the way that I, th that I can see things develop is one of the main pillars of growth behind um, how we got to where we're at. So that was my aha moment and realized, I realized, how direct of an impact we do have to the game. That's why I laugh when some other YouTubers out there will say, well, I can't, I don't have any uh, clout when they do. They all do. Uh, any type of influencer, if that's what you want to call us or whatever it is, <laughs> you want to classify people as the, what, what we do, our voice it's heard. And sometimes it's a new idea. And sometimes it's acted upon by the people that are listening to you. And that that's like a that that that's magic. That's magic sauce. <laughs> that's magic sauce. And now they drop an ISC called Race Chase. And that is beyond my wildest dreams. I this is I cannot emphasize the importance of this moment. We are a racing community. There are so many of us that have shown an interest in racing. And together we have built right, tracks right, around right. the Stanton system. We've got Steve CC who first came up with Uterpy <laughs> yeah. Icebreaker. Nice. And with the community, we went in game and designed the track, finished it, crossed the T's, dotted the I's and made it a real track. And then to hear devs talk <laughs> about the <laughs> track. <three. laughs> wait, and wait, wait, wait. I gotta shake. <laughs> Look straight. Shame. Shame. Is it the shirt? It's the Hawaiian Shame. shirt, isn't it? It's the Hawaiian shirt. We gotta talk with XGR about the Hawaiian shirts go to the extent of building What's a research sketch? outpost that research outpost <laughs> is the there because of what we did <laughs> we built yes. a racetrack and cig said we're going to embrace that combined with that hawaiian print jared right, yes. said canonize oh yeah canonize uh has something to do about uh making a saint after somebody uh, passes. This is what I was learned uh, uh, or taught in, in uh, Catholic school. <laughs> Canonize. I learned that when I was four. And if I did it, my nun whipped the hell out of my hands. And if you think those are fake stories, they're not. Nuns actually whip the hell out of your hands to teach you God's fear. <laughs> and if I didn't learn the definition to canonize, you can guarantee there was a ruler that was slapped down upon my hands. Many, many times for being a bad boy. I was a very bad boy. I was a very, very bad boy. XGR is making canon. 
grim prospects is mentioned. That's Osasha's as baby. <sighs> we always knew that Grim Hex was going to have Look a racetrack, <laughs> so we wanted to do something there. I went with the other. Was By the way, it was a joke. It was a highbrow joke. Look up the definition of canonized. Just do it, and you will understand that joke, and you will get the punchline, and you'll be like, <clears throat> you'll be oh sorry, wrong button. You'll be like, you'll be like this. You're like, holy shit, DG is on another level with his humor, because I am. People don't appreciate me. People don't understand the high IQ that, that resides here in this very large Irish head. Look up Canonize. Look it up. Art. It's zero G, very three-dimensional. There is no <laughs> up in space. <laughs> and Osasha's tackled the design and made something that was comprehensible with enough practice. And again, they mention Grim Prospects in the ISC. They've took the design. Yeah, I know. They, took the I'm my they, time. they were inspired by it and developed it neighboring Grim Hex. They're making a Grim Prospects inspired by our okay, track. Cool. Thanks, Pepe. And I, I can't believe it. Probably most important of all, the XGR club track we've designed. And again, Steve CC came up with the original design here, a racetrack around a specific section of R Corp. It's not area 18. You have to fly there and you find this grid. And in the middle is this tower with a blue line on it. And XGR is blue. So we said, this is the XGR clubhouse. Steve CC developed a track Again, we had a community design day. We all got together, we crossed the T's and dotted the I's and turned it into a real track. And oh my God, they have embraced it. They've got race gates. They've got, it's official again. This, I, I'm not doing a great job expressing how mind blowing this is. We always knew that Star Citizen was going to have racing. It was a big letdown coming from Elite Dangerous where we wanted to race and we didn't get the opportunity. There wasn't an- You want to know what racing in Elite Dangerous is like? It's- <laughs> it's very slow. It's like uh very slow go karts uh that for for small children, five to ten year old go karts. Uh, they, they you know, I don't even they they would be electric. They're bumper cars. Let's say bumper cars. You're racing bumper cars in Elite Dangerous. Uh, that's that's basically what you'd be racing. Enough support, and then moving to Star Citizen and having developers be interested in it. <laughs> Dy for there to be actual racing ships. <laughs> And then for the <laughs> CIG devs to lean into the things Architect. we've built together. Why was and he go crying? To these I missed, lengths. I missed it. What was he crying about? XGR is a part of the development of Star Citizen. I can't, as a community, us, we should feel so proud of what we've done over the past year and a bit. This track and is so cool. Big fat 07 Star to CIG so for taking cool, notice, man. for being inspired, Did Pedro do this for one daring too? to lean in, for not being shy on the Discord, hanging out, and literally going oh. next level, above and beyond to build this many tracks oh my god the snake pit was a almost a proof of concept to what they could do in a small time does frame. he not understand the flight modes no architect you know we're Probably using all, doesn't get that that's the thing it? snake pit used a lot of preset assets that you know they took from hurston and then moved over and then uterpy looks to be using a lot of stuff yeah from i agree steeled i Babbage. agree dude but then on our corp, we're seeing some holographic gates. We oh, same here, Kiss. We haven't I seen those shaders, those picture effects some, uh, before, those projections. Spice, you know, I agree, Kiss. And that is amazing. I bet you, Grim Prospects might have XGR a little bit too. I listen, listen. You're absolutely right, Mad Style. Mad Style, you're right on the money. Can we give him some applause for that? That's... This is 
like a gamer doing the work for you and the dev's like oh cool thanks bro <laughs> you know what i mean like the game the developer doesn't have to do much you know to kind of accommodate these tracks uh maybe build a little bit of art here and there to kind of you know f form it up so that you can get an idea what the track is going to be as you fly through it right but you're right man style xgr made cloud imperium's job easier i'm rambling this is chaotic i i just finished the video no the i'm ISC. rambling i i went straight to the discord and <laughs> wrote canonized canon everybody congratulations i'm so proud of this moment i'm so grateful to you our community everybody in it that shows up and has a good time with our races <laughs> that is sketch. on the discord thank you. thank you sketch we set out xgr not really knowing what it was going to be and i really feel like i've extended my family no joke i'm so grateful every day i think i'm working on xgr every day i'm thinking about xgr every day uh and you're all in my hearts and we get that i'm just uh mind blown yep Fuck yeah. Nerdgasm. 100% nerdgasm. Ah! <laughs> anyway, guys, listen to me. Let's get back to the show here. All right, there we are. Get some music up on here. Let's do this. There we go. Guys, tonight has been amazing. The level of the energy only equal to my third eye. Level of the energy only equal to my third eye. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Enjoying me while I enjoy you. Enjoying me while I enjoy you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you better be here tomorrow. I got lots to talk about. We're going to talk about how I defeated COVID. We're going to talk about how I have a 20-year-old man stamina energy. We're going to talk about uh, the stash and the loss of our friend. The cursed stash, maybe a memoriam. Something in remembrance of our great loved Sam Elliott stash that has now gone from my face. <sighs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>